Have you watched the YouTube video with Jeezy and Nia Long? Ooh, baby, it's juicy. So you know I have to come on here and talk about it from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist here. If you're new, hey, but if you're a returning subscriber, you already know how my videos go. Now, you know there's a full disclaimer on this, baby. If you have not watched the video, it is a one hour video that is on Jeezy's YouTube channel. It is with him and Nia Long, and he breaks down a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to talk about today. Technically, I want to talk to you guys about three main things, and then I'm going to give y'all a bonus because you know we got to talk about Jenny Bai and his marriage slash divorce too. Even though Nia Long was a part of this conversation, I'm I'm really going to primarily focus on Jeezy because he dropped some things that I don't want us to miss. And can we talk about while we're here for a second, how amazing and how beautiful Nia Long is? Baby, when they say black don't crack, <laughs> black don't crack. I wasn't even going to watch it, but the Shade Room, the Jasmine brand, and y'all was talking about it so much and sending it to me that I was like, let me go ahead and watch this and then give my opinion. So if you have not watched it, press pause on this. Go on over to his channel, watch it, spin the block, and then come back and watch this review video as well. Because look, it was just like an unlikely duo that I didn't even know that we needed, okay? At first, when I was watching it, I was like, okay, Nia. <laughs> Are you trying to act like his therapist because it was giving therapy vibes and the questions that she had at first? I was like, hold on now. But as the conversation grew and got more intense and they just start having dialogue, it was authentic. It was amazing. They vibed out well. They fed off of each other well. And I'm glad these two had the opportunity to sit down because we saw things from a male perspective and a female perspective. So the first thing I want to talk to y'all about in regards to Jeezy is childhood trauma. Trauma. This man mentioned a whole bunch of traumatic experiences prior to the age of like 10 or 11. We're talking about him getting touched inappropriately, so molested at an early age. We're talking about his mother pulling a gun out on him and threatened to use it. We are also talking about him being at his friend's house and seeing his friend's mama get shot. Woo! One of those things is a lie, let alone just those three. And I'm sure there were so many other experiences that colored his childhood. Now, with a child, someone who is innocent and who's supposed to be having fun and living their best life and not exposed to these types of events, these have a massive, okay, massive impact on how you grow up, how you see the world, how you interact with other people, and what you think in the narratives and the stories that you create about other people. Now you're going through life thinking that people are not safe because you were touched inappropriately. A gun was pulled out on you. You saw other people get shot when you was at a young age. You have a narrative about the world and about the people in the world, so you're navigating through life as such. And I know now that trauma is a big word that y'all love to use. You know, I'm here for y'all learning new therapy words, but some of y'all overdo it and misuse words. Now, traumatic experiences are one thing, but one of the things that I wanna talk to y'all about real quick is the wound that trauma leaves you with. That's the area that sticks with you. That's the thing you can't let go of. That's the thing that show up in your relationship, romantic or platonic, family, friends, coworkers, business. That's the thing that you just can't get away from. That's the abandonment. That's the rejection. That's the loss. That's the fear. That's all of those things. What is the hole and the gap? What did that trauma leave you? Because once you start to get to that, that's where we get to the root of duty. That's where we get to the root cause of things. Once we get there, then we can start to heal those very deep, low, dark, might I say, areas of ourselves. And then the byproducts of that healing is healthier relationships, is being better with yourself, more emotionally intelligent, more of those things. And Jeezy was very articulate. He was very open. He was very honest. He was very refreshing, to be honest with you. I didn't know because I see a lot of rappers on these interviews and videos that they do. And you like, what you say? I don't even understand you because they're like, yeah, you, you show up and then you show up and then they not making no sense. But he was able to articulate his story so well and really get raw and dirty and keep it a hundred with us. And I appreciate that for real. The second thing I want to talk to y'all about is daddy and mommy issues. I'm going to lump these two in together because 
he didn't necessarily really talk about his dad so much, but he absolutely talked about his mom. And the fact that he didn't talk about his dad maybe told me a little bit about his father maybe being absent and not there. So we know that that's a wound, a trauma, right? That wound, that's there as well. But we know that he had a lot of trauma from his mom. His mom pulled out a gun on him and threatened to use it. Like, I will take you out of here, sir. But we know that mama trauma or mommy issues is a real thing. And I'm not gonna get on my soapbox like I normally do, but I personally feel that mommy wounds are so much deeper than daddy wounds at times because the mom, the mother is the one who carried you. She carried you in utero. You were the most intimate person with her for nine whole months. So all of the things that your mama felt, the anxiety, the frustration, the worry, the anger, the hunger, all of those things that she felt, you felt. So if his mom didn't know how to mother appropriately, didn't know how to express herself appropriately, I can't imagine how she was when she was pregnant with Jeezy too. So trauma can absolutely 1 million percent start in utero. And honestly, what that leads us to is my third point, which is generational trauma, generational patterns. And if you're a person of faith, generational curses too. I mean, clearly this video cannot encompass and break down everything that Jeezy was saying, but he talked about how substance issues was a thing and a pattern that he experienced, but it also was something that was passed down through his bloodline, through generation. He also talked about having a difficult relationship with his son and his children. You see the pattern here? His mom didn't have the best relationship with him. Now he's not having the best relationship with his children. These are all generational patterns that get passed down from generation to generation if they're not resolved. And I think the hard part about this is not to, not to neglect or to give anybody a pass, but even if we probably trace his family history back to like his grandmother or his great grandmother, I can guarantee that probably his great grandma wasn't good to his grandma and his grandma wasn't good to his mama, right? If we wanted to trace this back. So I think it's important for him as he is doing, because he seems like he's really doing the work and going to therapy. He's breaking that generational cycle with his children now. He's repairing relationships. He now has a daughter with Jenny Mai, which we're gonna talk about in a quick second. And he's repairing all of those relationships that were broken because of what he experienced. Now, he experienced a lot, right? He was talking about rolling up to concerts and venues and events with 200 people, like rolling deep, as we say in the hood, with 200 people because his life was being threatened, because people were trying to literally kill him. He went to jail multiple times. There was just so much to his story that I was like, whoa, you never really know what people are going through, even when they're successful, even when they have a lot of money, he even talked about not even knowing how to manage his money. He had Lambos and expensive cars and all of these things, but bruh didn't even have health insurance, right? These are the things that no one teaches you when you grow up in poverty and you get a little change and you get a little coin. No one has really laid that foundation and that blueprint from you, especially if your caregivers and the people who raised you were a little raggedy, right? It seems like the streets raised him. And so when the streets raise you, you get a different narrative, you get a different perspective and the things that you learn are not effective, right? And so trying to love your son and love your daughter and your children when you weren't loved appropriately is very difficult. You have to unlearn a lot of things and relearn a lot of things and learn your children's love language and their apology language and all of these things of what they need, not what you want them to need. So I can only imagine as we get into the bonus to talk about Jenny Mai and their divorce, marriage or whatever is going on with them, I can absolutely see how everything, all of his life experiences impacted his relationship and marriage. Now, mind you, I don't know anything about Jeezy. I don't know anything about Nia Long because Nia Long was also very open and honest about her divorce and what she went through publicly with her ex-husband and her sons and how she raised them and how she used to date drug dealers. Like she was also very open too. So maybe I'll do a part two focusing on her next time, I'll think about it. Let me know in the comment section if y'all want me to do a part two specifically on Nia Long. But to think that your trauma, your mama issues, your daddy issues, your childhood stuff, the generational patterns didn't impact your current marriage, 
would be absolutely a lie, right? Now, I don't know them. I don't know the ins and outs of their marriage. I don't even know why they really got divorced in the first place. But one thing that I do know from this video is that he was very tactful. He didn't talk bad about her. He didn't say anything negative about her. He gave credit where credit was due. He talked about what he was going through. He said, I'm uneasy. I'm unhappy. I want to be married. I wanted this to work. And he didn't place any blame. He said, we went to therapy, but it couldn't be worked out in therapy. It could, we were on two different pages to the point where I tried everything that I knew how to do to make this relationship and marriage work, but it still didn't. I can only imagine how deep and hurtful that is for all parties involved, especially when he was the one, I believe, who initiated the divorce. So I want to honor him because we see so many people who talk bad about their baby mama or their ex. And look, he still has a child with her. He still has to deal with her, Jenny Mai, in some capacity. So the fact that he was wise, the fact that he talked about it with great, and he only talked about it for a short while. I thought they was gonna spend a little bit more time in this video talking about it, but it was just towards the end and just a short snippet. And I'm glad that Nia pulled that out of him. But I want him to know that it's so honorable for him to talk about how he tried to exhaust all avenues before calling it quits. And as a licensed marriage and family therapist, that is one of the things I highly recommend for people to do. Don't just sit up here and think like, oh, I tried one little thing. I tried to talk to them and uh, now it's it. I'm calling it quits, divorce. No, did you exhaust all avenues? Did you talk to the person? Did you go to therapy? Did you read some books? Did you take some classes? What, whatever you needed to do, did you do that? Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to say, I gave everything I knew how to give. And you want to be able to walk away from the situation with no blood on your hands. Walk away in the situation saying, I gave everything that I possibly could and it still didn't work. You don't want to have any shoulda, coulda, woulda. Now, if I would have did that, or if I would have said that, or if we would have went to therapy, would have tried a little harder, I wonder if it would have worked. You don't want to have that type of hamster wheel going on in your mind because that can haunt you for the rest of your life. So thank you so much for watching another video on my channel. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.